Well, this is the third time we've had an incident in this parking lot with someone taking a vehicle at gunpoint. Get back. Back up. Drop the knife now! Drop it. He just walked in. He just walked in. He's taking pictures of her. Yeah, he's taking pictures of her skirt. It's one of America's biggest companies, and with more than 4,000 locations, it's no surprise that Walmart has dealt with its share of in-store arrests. These situations can be terrifying for customers, employees, and the police themselves. We're breaking down nine of the biggest takedowns at Walmart locations. Welcome to After Hours, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Sam Goldberg. First, we're in the metro Atlanta area. It's June 9th, 2023. Police responded to reports of a man in the store touching women without their consent. The officers check in with the store security team and see the suspect do it right on camera. He just did it again. He just did it again to these, to these two females right what's, here. What's he doing? Walking around grabbing their ass. Yeah, he's right there. There he is. This dude here? Yeah. Yesterday he was in here and a little girl reported, a little girl, probably nine, reported that he grabbed her butt. And then we were looking for him, but he, he got out before we could get to him. Right. And then today... Uh, he just walked in. He just walked in. Oh, he's taking pictures of her. Yeah, he's taking pictures of her, oh, yeah, pictures of her skirt. All right, yeah. Oh, well, that's a good, oh that's he's done. That's good. That's good. That's good. When officers approach the suspect, later identified as Gary Moultrie, he decides to take off. Move, move. It's coming outside. General merchandise. Move, move. <laughs> One zero six radio there, fast. Subject was sick already on foot. And four. The chase then picks up in the garden center where the man tries to tell another officer that he has a daughter who he needs to help. But then he decides to take off running again. I've got him at the garden center. Stop, stop, is, stop. My daughter is like right there and she needs some help. Now. Glasses, black shirt, camo pants, she black help. shoes. Now. He's running back the other way. All right, he's, go he's going back into Walmart. He's running around the garden center if I get someone else over here. Stop right there! An officer later tased Moultrie to get him to cooperate. As police tried to put handcuffs on him, Moultrie slammed his phone into the ground, possibly trying to hide evidence. Moultrie, who was a registered sex offender, was charged with sexual battery. His court case is currently pending. Next, we're in Lee County, Florida, where security video from a Walmart shows a man allegedly trying to abduct a child. On December 29th, 2023, deputies responded to an attempted kidnapping. They learned a 64-year-old man grabbed a four-year-old child's hand and tried to walk away with him. A family member then intervened and pulled the child back. The man had already left the store when deputies arrived, but they were able to identify him as Pablo Pentuelas Hernandez. Within an hour, they were at his home to confirm his identity and arrest him. Pentuelas Hernandez was initially charged with false imprisonment of a child 13 years old and under. But just this month, the prosecutor reduced the charge to a misdemeanor battery. He's due back in court February 14th. Next, we're heading to Hobbs, New Mexico, where a Walmart employee was shot in the parking lot while leaving for his lunch break. And it appears to have all been connected to a robbery gone wrong. It happened on May 18th, 2023. Officers found 24-year-old Jordan Ruiz on the ground with a gunshot wound. He had been working the overnight shift when the shooting happened around 2 a.m. Other employees were also in the parking lot when it had happened. A okay. standing gentleman was standing right here and my friend Jordan just walked up to us, like went in front of him, and that guy kind of acted like he was looking at this car. That's why I was like, "Man, you're gonna rob something." And then I told the other lady, "I said, hey, I think that guy's gonna rob." Find out what so happened. We better keep an eye on him. Ruiz, who was rushed to the hospital, unfortunately died. One of the employees told police he had tried to chase down the shooter's car. 
the uh, digital caller advised that when the vehicle took off, they followed it, followed it down to Camino Del Rao, it parked and then took off again. I, I tell you, I down, man. I just, I, I got so far before they stopped and they, they, they ended at me. I, I tried to take off so. I heard you no know, shots and then I looked out and then I seen him like look over here like a concern. And he ran and then I just heard him say they shot. So as soon as he said that, like I just chased the car. The witness says he came back to the Walmart after the suspects pointed a gun at him. As crime scene technicians examined the scene, officers tried to figure out if this was connected to other cars being stolen. Well, this is the third time we've had an incident in this parking lot with someone taking a vehicle at gunpoint. After looking at surveillance footage from the Walmart store as well as nearby businesses, detectives were able to figure out the car involved. They put out a bolo, aka be on the lookout, and a deputy in neighboring Texas spotted the car. That led to a 111 mile high speed chase that went through multiple counties. Deputies were finally able to stop the stolen vehicle. 18 year old Zachary Baeza and two juveniles were then arrested. Detectives then interviewed all three suspects back in Hobbs, New Mexico. And what I'm here to do is give you an opportunity to explain to me uh, what took place. And the reason being is because Ray's putting it on you and I don't think that's true. Detectives then determined the juvenile male was the shooter and Baeza was the driver. A 16-year-old girl, believed to be the girlfriend of Baeza, is not facing charges. But you're one of two things in this. You're a witness or you're a defendant. This is plain James I can be about. It, all right? You know how serious this is. This is a murder. This isn't just a stolen car. It's way bigger than that. But you already know that. Somebody died. There's some actions taken by these guys. Baeza was charged in New Mexico with first degree murder, attempted armed robbery, larceny, and possession of stolen vehicles. He's also charged in Texas for the high speed chase. He'll be back in a New Mexico courtroom at the end of February. Now we head to Cleveland, Ohio, where police body camera video shows officers chasing two people inside of a Walmart, tackling one to the ground and holding another at gunpoint. This happened on August 13th, 2023. Police went to Walmart searching for murder suspect Shania Jones. They see her and even try to grab her, but Jones then takes off running. Jones eventually falls and officers handcuff her. There's a police cruiser already parked outside the Walmart tire department. Officers also stopped a man trying to leave through the front door of the store. They identified him as Walter Robinson Jr. Get on the ground. On the, on the ground. ground. On the ground now. Right now. On your belly. On your belly. Hands me on your back. Robinson swears he didn't do anything wrong. Why are you running? Because she was running. They were chasing her. Who's chasing who? So you just start running? Yeah, that's not, right. how, that that's running not how it works, buddy. Cleveland detectives believe Jones was part of a shooting over the summer that left one man dead and another wounded. Police say Jones and Robinson had been at that Walmart multiple times, staring down an employee who was a relative of one of their victims. Jones is now facing charges for murder and felony assault. Both she and Robinson are also indicted for stalking and obstruction. So I think it's pretty clear from watching After Hours, as I know everyone does every single week, the world isn't always the safest place. It's important to realize if you're ever seriously hurt, your injury could actually be worth millions. That's where Morgan & Morgan, a proud sponsor of After Hours comes in. Morgan & Morgan doesn't just settle for lowball offers. In the past couple months, they've seen verdicts of 12 million in Florida, 26 million in Philadelphia, and 6.8 million in New York. And here's the kicker, the fee is absolutely free unless you win. You can start your claim with America's largest injury law firm in just a single click on your phone. They've completely modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and communicate with your legal team all from your phone. You don't even have to leave your couch to do so. So to start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan, go to www.forthepeople.com backslash after hours or click the link in the description and in the pinned comments. Next, we're inside a Walmart store in Marin County, Florida. It's Wednesday, March 30th, 2022, just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Drop the knife now! 
Drop it now! Drop the knife! Police responded to reports that this woman, Brandy McCown, was threatening other customers in the store with a knife. Get back. Back up. Drop the knife now! McCown seems to believe that law enforcement has somehow harmed her loved ones. Drop the knife. Drop it now. Put it down. Backup arrives and you can see McCown look toward a female deputy who was standing behind a sales rack. While McGowan is momentarily distracted, the first deputy switches from his gun to a non-lethal stun gun. After repeated orders to drop her weapon, the deputy fires the stun gun at McCown and she goes down. According to investigators, McCown had approached the store holding a brick and threatened customers with it. Then she found a pocket knife for sale and used a pair of scissors she found in the store to open the packaging. She then allegedly began threatening customers with the knife. After her arrest, investigators say they discovered she had ingested large amounts of meth earlier that day. Police charged McGowan with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A court determined she wasn't mentally fit to stand trial, so she was taken to a mental health institution. Now we're back in the Atlanta area in Georgia, where two mothers inside a Walmart got into an argument and ended up throwing crayons. It's October 26, 2023. On security video from inside the store, you can see Brittany George walking around with a cart with her two children inside. Another woman who was not identified allegedly told George that her children were being unruly. The women argued, but then separated. Later in the video, when George spots the other woman again, she throws a box of crayons at her, hitting the other woman's child. A Walmart employee attempts to intervene, but things escalate, with George lunging at the woman and allegedly hitting her in the face. George drove away before police got there, but they were able to identify her and arrest her. George was charged with child cruelty and simple assault. At the time of this recording, her court case is listed as pending. Now we go to the Peachtree City, Georgia. Body camera footage shows police inside a Walmart store after a teenager allegedly started a fire. Police department, everybody out! It happened on August 24th, 2022. Officers worked their way through the building to make sure no one was left inside. 10 4, you can evacuate all day ring. There he is, it's a very large fire that cannot be put out. Officials say a 14 year old girl admitted to intentionally starting the fire in the paper products aisle. It took nine hours for emergency crews to put out the flames, which caused extensive damage to the building. The teenager was charged with first degree arson and sentenced to juvenile court. Because she's a minor, her name has not been released. We end today's episode in Deltona, Florida. It's September 14th, 2022, around 7.30 p.m. Police were called out to a Walmart store because employees and customers spotted two little kids running around the parking lot in the rain. The kids ran out of the vehicle and uh, they're half naked. Which vehicle? This one right here. It looks like you got them dressed. Awesome. We got the children's clothes. Okay. I tried to check on him, ask him if he needed medical attention. He's drooling out of his mouth. Eyes rolling in the back of his head. Yeah, I'm in contact. Start! The man appears to be unconscious in the front seat and the engine's running. Hey, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Hey! What are you doing? Right. Step out! Step out. He seems confused when the officer asks him repeatedly about the children that were with him. Where are your kids at? You got some kids? No, they're not his kids? Who else do you have in the car with you? Who else was in the car with you? Who else is in the car with you? Okay. And her kids, right? Yeah. Okay. Where's the girl at? Kids in there. They have the kids. Yep. Those kids in there? No, the kids are not in your car. They got out of your car. Deputies say the man, 35-year-old Dazone Killenbeck, was supposed to be watching the children for his friend while she shopped. Instead, the toddlers, ages two and three, were found in the busy parking lot. They went with Walmart staff after they ran in the parking lot in nothing but a diaper. While you were sleeping at the steering wheel, right? So for now, 
Put your hands behind your back. Deputies say Killing Beck had a straw in his lap when he woke up that was later tested and had oxycodone and fentanyl inside. Killing Beck was charged with child neglect, possession of drug paraphernalia, tampering with evidence, and driving on a suspended license. He pleaded no contest and was given two years of probation. Thanks for watching. Law and Crime After Hours is written and produced by Savannah Williamson. Video editing is done by Michael Dininger and audio editing by Brad Maybe. I'm Sam Goldberg. We'll see you next week.